Bitcoin friends, it's Bitcoin Memo. Just wanted to say thanks. My last video was my most viewed video. So thanks to everyone that watched that. And we will keep talking about this Pi Cycle top indicator because there is a lot of interest still in this topic. And in the last video, we modified the original Pi Cycle top indicator so that the indicator matched all three previous peaks to the exact day. And I mentioned we'd look for other combinations that also fit all three peaks. And I did manage to find quite a few different ones. So in that intro video, if I just zoom in here, you'll see these colored bands. And this is actually five different solutions that predict the tops exactly using different numbers on the Pi Cycle top indicator. And I've just got them up here. So if I were to just have one of these here, we can see they cross here exactly at the top and the first combination is the two white lines and if we go to the second one we can see they they also cross at the top the the two green lines and the third one here the two yellow lines also at the top and the two red lines and also the two blue lines here and this does get all three tops exactly using all of these combinations and that intro video showed all of them at the same time. So the combinations here, you might be able to see this might be a bit small. We can see the first solution here. We'll just give you the values quickly. So the two daily moving averages are 126 and 569 times by two. And the multiplier is 2.77. The second combination is 581 and 119 with a multiplier of 2.89. The third combination is 571 and 121 with a multiplier of 2.83. The fourth combination is 563 and 122 with a multiplier of 2.79. And the fifth one here is 591 and 120 with a multiplier of 2.92. Now there was also two other ones that I found here. Uh, they, those numbers are 586 and 120 with a multiplier of 2.91 and 585 and 120 with a multiplier of 2.89. So I just wanted to see if there was more than one solution and we did find seven actually. And there probably is a few more. They do lie in a similar range here. So it will be interesting to see at the next peak if these all cross together at the same time again or if one is correct and the others aren't. But it's just interesting to know there are multiple solutions and there's not exactly one perfect way of doing it. So another interesting thing I found is if you applied it here to XRP, this is the combination that's 569, 126 and 2.77 multiplier. We can see that it did get the two tops here on XRP also. This is the same combination on the one that got the Bitcoin tops also. So you can see here it did get these two tops in this cycle. So currently on XRP, we can see they're pretty far apart. XRP is having a pump at the moment. So we can also keep an eye on this one and see when they're close to crossing also. Applying that exact combination to Ethereum, we can see it did get the top here exactly in 2017, but it did also trigger a top here, which was inaccurate. So it's not going to be accurate on every chart. We can see here it got the top there in 2017 and this is the same one that worked on XRP and Bitcoin. But again, as I mentioned in the previous video, you don't want to just rely on one indicator to predict the top. You want to use multiple indicators. I just think this is something interesting to keep an eye on. And with this one on Ethereum, we can see the lines are quite close together here. But again, I wouldn't put all your eggs in one basket. If it didn't predict a top with this trigger here and we did go higher. So it's just an interesting investigation to look at. Having a math background, I always want to solve puzzles and finding a solution to them. And once I found that solution, I wanted to know if there were multiple solutions. And then obviously the next step would be finding a general formula. But because this is based on all the different price action and movements, there's no pattern here with the price movements. So you wouldn't be able to make a general formula for this that works all the time. So let's go back to the Bitcoin chart and look at the, the, where we are currently using all of these bands together here. We can see, although they look close, 
there's still a lot to go here before they do cross and the average difference between the two here is about five thousand dollars so with the original indicator that was accurate within a four day error they were only eight hundred dollars apart knowing that maybe the cross was going to come soon but using this more accurate one we can see that I don't think that's going to happen for at least three more months minimum. And what we will actually do is, is look at a few projections as to when these might cross and what price level we might get to when they cross. So what I've done here is I've imported all the Bitcoin price data all the way back from 2010 into Excel. And I've also put in all of these multiple solutions here. So I've put in all seven solutions with the multiplier and the two moving averages and just set it to calculate what these are and the difference between the two which when this is zero indicates when those lines will cross and a possible top so we can see here the first top in 2013 at 235 you can see these white squares here are the difference between the moving averages and we can see here it turns negative for the first time and we can see that it matches up across all of the different Pi cycle top settings. We have these white squares all the way across where it did turn negative for the first time. So I do have the current price here from a couple of days ago. We're at 57,139. And the difference between the moving averages is, is around 5,000. We can see it's slightly different on each of these combinations. That one's 5,800, 6,200. But as we could see during the previous tops, eventually they cross at the same time at zero. So what I've done here is just a test just to see how it would play out if we were to go up $1,000 a day from here, which would be a 30,000 increase per month, just to see when that would initiate a cross here. So if we look at these numbers here, if we use this one for example, we just look at when this number goes to zero. You can see it's at 5,000. Keep scrolling down. You can see as we got to 100,000 in price, the difference between the moving averages would be 1,800. Then we'd get closer together and we would get a first negative number here at a price of 116,000 per Bitcoin. And that would occur on May 31st of this year. We can see the other ones uh, one day after here on June 1st. But again, these are just projections. Obviously, we don't, we don't know what the price action is going to be. It's going to go up and down, up and down. So what if the price went up $500 per day instead of 1000 Well, let's just have a look at that. So what we would see is we can see it's 5000 apart with the moving averages. We're going up 500 per day, which is 15000 a month. We can see these moving averages squeeze down to 3,000, down to 2,000, ignore that white square. We can see here we would get down to 2,500 difference between the moving averages at a price of 91,000. And then the moving averages would actually start expanding. So we wouldn't actually get a cross here. We can see it's getting higher up to 5,000, 6,000. So moving up $500 a day would not cause a cross. But I do want to just point out here, if we would go up $500 a day, say Bitcoin was at $500 and it went up $500 a day, and after 10 days we were at $5,000, then the daily moving average over those 10 days would be $2,750. This is the total here. This is the average. And we can see if we still went from 500 to 5,000 in 10 days, but we didn't go up 500 a day, so we went up and we, we dropped a bit and we went back up, but we still ended up at the same point, then the moving average would be 2,060. So even though the start price and the end price over those 10 days is the same, the moving average isn't the same value. So predicting what's going to happen is extremely difficult because we will be going up and down. And all we can do is really wait for those lines to get a bit closer together and we'd be able to make a more accurate prediction as to when they would cross. So thanks for watching. I think we've done quite a lot on the Pi Cycle Top Indicator. We'll just keep updating those numbers. And until these lines get a bit closer together, then I don't think there's much more to talk about with the Pi Cycle Top Indicator.
and I will come back to it when it becomes more relevant when these lines squeeze together a bit more and, and we are getting closer to a possible top in the Bitcoin market. So thanks for watching. I'm Bitcoin Mamo. See you next time.